Hi, and welcome back to the channel. In this video, I'm going to be talking about BERT Topic. And if you're not familiar with BERT Topic, then stay tuned because I'm going to be covering a lot of the basic things that you need to know to get started with it. This will not be a comprehensive video on all the different ways in which BERT Topic works. Rather, it'll be a video based around using BERT Topic and getting up and running with some of the basic syntax of it and also getting you familiar with some of the ways that you can use BERT Topic to visualize different clusters of documents in your corpus. For those of you who aren't familiar with BERT Topic, it is a way of doing topic modeling, leveraging the powerful uh, language models known as transformer models, specifically BERT models. And the nice thing about BERT Topic is that it functions not only as a way of doing topic modeling, but it leverages machine learning algorithms to, and language models to actually find clusters within a large corpus and then group those documents together for you automatically. It has a bunch of advantages over traditional latent derelict allocation topic modeling, which is kind of the original method of doing topic modeling in NLP and also in the sciences. And the biggest advantage that it has is that it can also not only embed your documents before finding patterns amongst them, we'll talk about embedding in just a little bit, but the other nice thing about BERT Topic is that it also allows you to generate the number of topics automatically, something that you have to specify with most LDA algorithms. So with all that said, let's go ahead and just kind of take a look at what you need to know to get started. Now with BERT Topic, all you're going to have to do is install with PIP pip install BERT topic, all lowercase. If you do that, you can be up and running with BERT topic in just a few moments. And also for this video, you're gonna to wanna to pip install pandas. That's gonna be the way in which we kind of interact and just display our data. If you're not familiar with pandas, then you can check out my whole series on pandas on this channel, but just understand that it's a way of viewing maybe like in your mind, Excel or spreadsheet data within a Jupyter notebook or in Python in general. So let's go ahead and take a look how you get started with BERT Topic. Well, once you've installed it, you can say from BERT Topic, import BERT Topic, just like that. It's the BERT Topic class. You're going to want to make sure that B-E-R-T are all capitalized with OPIC being lowercase. We're going to import JSON as well. This comes standard with all Python installations. And we're also going to import pandas as as PD. So JSON and pandas are just going to be the ways that we grab the data and visualize the data. So let's go ahead and import everything from that cell and everything if you've installed it correctly should import correctly. Now that we've got everything imported correctly, let's go ahead and open up our data. As with a lot of the videos on this channel, we're going to be working with data vol7.json. This is the JSON file that details uh, from the Bitter Aller Project, testimonies of or victims of violence of human rights violations in South Africa. It's a uh, data set that we cultivated, and so it's a digital humanities data set. And so let's go ahead and load this up real fast. JSON.load, and we're going to pass an F. We're going to grab all of the descriptions. Now, you've seen me cover this a lot on this channel, so I'm not going to go into too much detail about what these are, but essentially they are brief one to four sentence, sentence descriptions of human rights violations. And the goal of this video is to use BERT Topic to try to find and isolate patterns amongst all these different descriptions. And so what we need to do to get the model up and running is we need to load in a model from BERT Topic. And in the documentation and in this video, we're gonna call this object the topic underscore model. And this is gonna be equal to the BERT or the uh, BERT Topic class from BERT Topic. And this is really just going to take one mandatory argument. And this is going to be embedding model, which we're going to set equal to, and I have a cheat sheet over here so I don't uh, mess this up, all-mini-lm-l6-v2. So this is the transformer model that we're going to be using to embed our documents. And if you're executing this cell for the first time, you're going to see some downloading occurring because BERT Topic is going to be downloading locally for you the a model that you're going to use to embed your documents. So real quickly, what is embedding? Embedding is a way of taking a document, which is a string or a piece of text, and converting it into a numerical representation. There are a lot of different ways that you can embed a document, but what's nice about this approach with BERT is that it embeds a document with a sentence transformer. This means that that numerical representation is a very deep semantic representation of that document. 
and that deep representation can improve the way in which your documents are clustered in a topic modeling approach. And that's one of the goals of BERT Topic. And so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and load in all these documents into it. So I'm going to create two variables here called uh, probs and topics. And this is going to be equal to topic underscore model. And then here we need to call the fit transform uh, function, a method. And what this is going to do for us is it's going to take in all of our documents, all of those strings, in this case about 22,000 of them, and it's going to embed all of those documents and predict on those documents. And by this we mean um, make predictions about where they're actually clustered together. So let's go ahead and load them all into our model by just referencing the docs variable. And so this will load everything up and this will take about five to maybe 20 minutes on your computer to run. If you want to do this with a smaller sample, I recommend dropping this down to maybe just the first 1000 documents. I will say right now that I've been asked in the past to do this video on BERT topic and kind of compare it to top to vec, which does a lot of very similar things. And I'm gonna be really doing a special video that compares these two libraries and when to use them. But I will say that one of the key advantages that BERT topic has over top to vec is that it works well with lower quantities of documents. Top to vec is really useful when you are well over a thousand documents. And there's a lot of research to support that. And I'm gonna provide a link in the description down below to this article, which I highly encourage you to read if you wanna get some background on how BERT topic works, how it compares to other approaches in topic modeling, such as LDA, NMF, top to vec, et cetera. And it uses the classic Twitter post uh, data set to do this. And it's really useful, but I really recommend scrolling all the way down to the bottom it's quite a long read, but I promise you it is well worth your time. All the way down to the bottom, I believe it's figure five, you have a nice breakdown, table five, sorry, of the advantages and disadvantages, according to the authors, about all these different approaches. And it gives you some insight on when you might want to use them. Now, I'm gonna do a video that kind of summarizes a lot of this article in the near future, but for right now, let's jump back to our notebook. So what we can do here is now that we've got everything ready to go, we can execute this cell. And this is where I'm gonna pause the video because this is gonna take five to 20 minutes to run. And then we're gonna pop back and start looking at some of the results from this trained model and from the topics that have, or the documents that have topics now assigned to them. So we'll pop back here in just a few seconds. Okay, now that we're back, we can go ahead and start working with our data. Our model is now entirely fitted and we can start kind of interrogating some of the things that are in this model. So the first thing we should do is we should take a look at topic underscore model dot get topic info. And this is kind of one of the first things I will typically do. And I think it's really important to do right now because it gives you a sense of the output from the model. And so what are we seeing here? Well, we're seeing a data frame or if you're thinking about this in Excel terms, a spreadsheet. And these three dots here indicate that it has been truncated. We can get all this information, but let's just take a look at this for right now. What do we see here? Well, we see three different headers. We see topic, we see count, and we see name. So topic is gonna to be the topic number. Negative one here are the outliers. These are the ones that you typically want to ignore. You might wanna grab them and look at them a bit more cl closely to try to figure out why they're outliers. Um, the count here is going to be the number of documents in this category. So we have 5,419 outliers. And then over here, we have under name, a few different pieces of information. We have the, uh, the topic number, preceded by a collection of the top four words that represent that document. And these are gonna be ways that you can kind of get a sense of what that document or the topic deals with. In this case, topic zero deals with detained, tortured, beaten, and arrested. And as I said, these are going to be things that deal with human rights violations. So one of the things that I can do is I can say, okay, well, that's interesting. Let me, let me get a better sense of the words. These four words seem like I have an idea, but let's get a deeper sense of this individual, um, in this individual topic. I can use topic uh, underscore model dot get underscore topic, and I can pass in one argument here. This is gonna be an integer that's going to correspond to the topic in question, and I'll get more words associated with that topic. And a good thing to rec recognize right here is that we're seeing the word under here. Now in most LDA or uh, older kind of approaches to topic modeling that, that don't leverage sentence transformers, you're going to see these things known as stop words removed. 
When you're embedding a document with a BERT model, you don't need to remove this as noise. Instead, you don't have to do any pre-processing at all. BERT can work with noise. It's meant to work with noise. And so we don't remove stop words here. So he, under, these are all very important for understanding larger contexts of words, which is where BERT really does shine. So the big question is, well, what kind of documents are actually in this topic? Well, fortunately, once again, the topic model class stores this information for us. So we can say get underscore representative underscore docs. And again, we can pass in one argument. It's going to be an integer that corresponds to our topic number. And we get the uh, top three documents that kind of represent that cluster. And this is very useful information, but what if I wanted to go a little deeper? Uh, what if I wanted to see kind of the entire data set as all the clusters actually assigned to it? Well, one of the things I can do, and I'm gonna zoom in here just a little bit, is I can convert that topics object that we created when we trained the BERT topic model. I can go ahead and grab that and make it into a data frame. So I can say df is equal to pd.dataframe. And if you don't understand what's happening here, don't worry, this isn't important for working with um, to working with BERT topic. We're going to have one column called topic and another called document. And this is going to correspond to our topic object, which we created all the way up here, and our docs, our original documents. Let's go ahead and take a look at this. And it helps if you have topics. There we go. And this now is a spreadsheet or a data frame that contains all of our original documents now with the do uh, topic added to them as a separate little component. So now we can store this outside of Python, we can work with it within Python, but this is a way that you can kind of go through and examine and really kind of structure all your topics alongside all of your original documents. And this is kind of the main things that I wanted to cover with kind of how to look at the output from BERT topic and really start to work with it, but we can go even deeper. And I think this is what really lets BERT topic shine is that you can natively visualize within a Jupyter notebook a bunch of different things that deal with your data. So the first thing I can do is I can call in our topic model once again, and I can say dot visualize underscore topics. And when I execute this cell, this is why this notebook was a little zoomed out at the start. It's because of uh, this visualization approach. We get probably something that's a little familiar to you if you're working with um, LDA topic modeling in the past. And this is an output within a Jupyter notebook that contains a bunch of different documents and the clusters around them. So the larger the, the circle, the bigger the cluster. And so this is topic one placed right here. And so what we're seeing is a two-dimensional representation, a flattened representation of all of our different documents, all 22,000, I believe included in here, is even some of the outliers. But we can go through and kind of visualize them. I can also go through and see where individual documents are placed. And we're not seeing the outliers. We're just starting with topic zero. That's wonderful. And I can go through and you see that the highlighting changes. So let's take a look at topic one. You see it highlight right there. Now we're on topic two, and it's highlighted right down there. And so what you're able to get a sense of are the documents and the topics and how they kind of cluster around each other. So the closer something is, the more semantically similar it should or theoretically could be. So this is one visualization approach. Another is to visualize your topic model as a bar chart. Uh, so I believe it's visualize.visualize underscore bar chart, bar chart being one word. And we get our topics now represented as a bar chart. And so that's where I want to wrap up this video. Hopefully this gives you a, a little bit of an introduction to BERT topic, gives you some code that you can use to get started with your own data sets and start kind of exploring it. Now with all things topic modeling, you don't just load this up and expect it to work perfectly on your data set. You're going to want to do some experimentation. You're going to want to try other approaches as well, such as LDA topic modeling. Perhaps that's better for you. Maybe some top to vec. Maybe that's better for you. You're not going to want to just take this and just get the results and start drawing conclusions 
conclusions, use this as a way to start exploring your data a little differently to start trying to make sense of where your documents kind of overlap in some semantic similarity. And that's really where BERT Topic shines. As always, thank you so much to everyone on this channel who supports it via Patreon and also YouTube members. You all help keep this channel alive. If you do get a lot out of this channel, like and subscribe, and also do consider supporting it financially, both as a YouTube member or as a Patreon supporter. Thank you so much.